Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Barrett from the C4 Cyber Club here at Cypress College. In this video today, I'm going to cover the CCNA3 Packet Tracer 5.5.1. So this is related to IPv4 ACL implementation challenge. So this is all about setting up ACLs. We're going to allow or deny traffic based on various requirements. And essentially, we're going to be setting up four different ACLs here. So we're going to have to read each requirement, make sure we're setting these ACLs in the in the uh, proper place. Um, you know, things to think about: <clears throat> is it a standard ACL or is it an extended ACL? We'll talk about that a little bit more and what that means. And of course, you have the your addressing table, which probably don't refer to refer to too much uh, most of the IPs and the networks you can see on the topology. One thing I do want to point out, there is a slight typo or error, something missing on this addressing table for this lab. So on HQ, um, you notice it lists three interfaces here. But if we look over here, we see there are one, two, three, four interfaces. And we're going to come to find that the interface that's missing on here is actually um, the serial connection going to the Internet. So and that is something where we will need to have a <clears throat> excuse me, an ACL set on this interface. So we'll come to that. Um, it is on the first one. So we'll come to it very soon. But I'll uh, discuss how we can locate that serial and um, or locate that interface to know what we're setting. All right, so objectives, configure a router with standard name ACLs, extended name ACLs. So remember, standard ACLs you want to place as close to the destination as possible, and extended ACLs you place as close to the source. So you have to think about, OK, what's the destination? What's the source? Am I using a standard or extend, standard or extended ACL? So that's something we'll talk about more. Um, yeah, so we're going to we're going to um, control access to terminal lines as well. So that's not an, on an actual interface, but actually the, you know, remember line VTY, etc. Now, also very important. As it says, important guidelines do not. Ignore these, so. We cannot use explicit deny on any statements. Now this in, in the real world, this would be very common. But um, I guess as practice in this lab, we are not able not allowed to use any explicit deny. And remember, if you don't follow these guidelines, you may not get your points. You know, remember, in the bottom right hand corner, you're looking for a completion of 100%. Now use shorthand whenever possible. So the shorthand would be host or any. So for example, if you're setting um, setting uh, to permit um, a network and then you add the wildcard mask or I'm sorry, not the wildcard mask, but uh, quad zeros um, for a host. Let's say that uh, let's say you're. Setting up for the enterprise web server, here's the um, IP instead of doing 192.168.1.70 space 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0 0 .0 quad zeros, um, you could just type host. And then this IP. So that's that's an example of using shorthand. So you want to do that whenever possible. Um, write your ACL statements to address the requirements in the order they are specified. So remember, ACLs start from the top and work their work their way down. So we want to make sure we keep these in order. And place your ACLs in the most efficient location and direction. So this is once again related to standard ACLs closest to the destination, extended ACLs closest to the source. And then, of course, you need to focus on and, and determine, OK, is this in, inbound or, or outbound, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started on ACL 1 requirements. So we're going to create an ACL 101. And we need to explicitly block FTP access to the enterprise web server from the Internet. 
So we see the enterprise web server down here. We need to block any FTP access coming from the internet. Now, this number uh, tells us that we are in the extended range. And remember, the extended range we want to be as close to the source. So the source, of course, is the internet. So this is where this interface that we were talking about in the beginning, uh, we need to figure out exactly which interface this is. So we know that we're going to be interfacing which, with the HQ router. Okay. Let me go to global configuration mode. So let's let's figure out that interface real quick. So we could do uh, do show IP interface brief. And so I remember that the 011 was on the chart and this IP looks like it's definitely going to be the one that's um, heading up here. So serial zero slash one slash zero. This is the interface that we're going to be eventually placing this, this um, ACL on. Okay. Now let's build out the ACL. So first thing we need to do uh, from the global config mode is we always start this with access list. We're creating a new access list. This is um, access list 101. And what are we doing? We're explicitly blocking FTP access. So we need to deny. And as you're learning this, it's always nice to, as you move along these commands, you could do a question mark, kind of say, kind of remind yourself, okay, what, what comes next, right? Well, we need to tell it um, the protocol. So remember extended access list, these, these can work on layer four uh, transport layer. So we're dealing with TCP, UDP, um, and in this case, FTP. So we want TCP protocol. And now we want to block all FTP traffic. So we, we could say any. So that would be the source. So anything coming from here. And next we need to choose the destination, which is the enterprise web server. And remember, we need to use shorthand. So I could technically type out the IP and quad zeros and then continue on. We need to set it for FTP, but because we need to use shorthand, this actually wouldn't give us the points. So instead, we could leave the IP, but in front of that, we say host. So that's saying that that is the exact host that we want as the destination of this rule. Now, next, um, let's do a question mark. What are our options? So we want to match only packets on a given port number. And that's going to be port 21 or, or FTP. And you notice that when you type in the EQ, if you do a question mark again, you could um, either type in FTP. You could also type in the port number. I'm just going to go ahead and add in FTP. OK, so that is the command. We're creating access list 101. We're denying TCP from anywhere to host. 192.168.1.70, which is the enterprise web server, as long as it equals FTP. Okay, so that's set. And what's next? So no ICMP traffic from the internet should be allowed to any host on HQLAN1. So HQLAN1, we could see uh, this is the network address. This is a slash 26 and it has these three PCs on it. So let's start typing this out. So same, same thing, access list 101. We're denying ICMP this time. And all ICMP traffic, so any traffic, that's the, that would be considered the source. And now we need to select the destination so that is the HQLAN1 network. So 
this is where we need to use the, the network IP followed by its wildcard mask. And uh, let me go ahead and pull up Notepad. So the wildcard mask is basically, basically the inverse of the subnet mask. So we know that this is a slash 26. So I'm sure most of you are familiar that a slash 24, um, that gives us a subnet mask of two, three, two, five, fives and a zero. And if we write that out in binary, that's eight ones, eight more ones, eight ones, and then eight zeros. Okay. Now, if we did the same under the slash 26, remember there's two more, these are the network bits. So there's two more. And if we turn those on, so to speak, you notice that, okay, we're left with six host bits. Now there's two, well, there's multiple methods to do this. And, and once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do it in your head. You may actually just start to memorize the wildcard mask, kind of the same as you start to memorize the subnet masks from, for certain um, CIDR notations. But what we could do here, if we look just at this here, we could say, okay, uh, if we go from left to right, we could say this is 128 plus 64. Remember the powers of two when we're dealing with uh, binary. Um, so one nine, one, I'm sorry, 128 plus 64, that's gonna be 192. And we could technically take 255 minus 192 and we'll get 63. So the wildcard mask would be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.63. Because essentially what we're doing is we're taking um, all 255s the whole way, subtracting it by this, which is why we're doing it just in this last, last octet. We know that these ones are going to be 0. OK, so that's one way. Or you could go from right to left, and you can say 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 is 63. Now, I only could do that method if maybe if this was like a slash 30, and you know that, OK, these are these two are all that's left. That's easy. You know, 1 plus 2, that's 3. Or, you know, maybe one add the 7 or, you know, or I'm sorry, add the 4, you get 7. So it depends, kind of depends. but. That's essentially how you find a wildcard mask. It's fairly straightforward. You could always pull up Notepad. Uh, but yeah, so in this case, we're going to be looking at a wildcard mask of 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.63. OK, so we add the network IP here, followed by the subnet mask. OK, so that was we're remember, we're still on ACL one. Um, that was the second requirement. And now we need to allow all other traffic. So this is the third and final rule. Um, as long as these two don't apply, then it will allow any. So access list 101 permit IP any any. OK. That got us some points. We're up to 90, I'm sorry, 19%. Now that we've set the requirements, this is where we need to interface with, uh, remember if I scroll up, we determine that serial zero slash one, I'm sorry, serial zero slash one slash zero is this interface here. Because remember, we're working with an extended ACL. It needs to be as close to the source as possible. So we interface s0 slash 1 slash 0. And now the command here, before we started with access list, but now we need to start with IP. Um, if you ever forget, you can do question mark. OK, we need to specify access control for packets. This is access group. And then we give it the ACL number, which was 101. And I'll do question marks so you can see now we need to decide, OK, is this inbound packets or outbound? And if you think about it, we're wanting to block what's coming in. OK, so then you'll type in in. 
And that is it. That is it for ACL requirements number one. Uh, you see we're up to 27%. Okay, so we just took care of that. Now moving on to number two, we're gonna use an ACL number of 111. Um, no hosts on HQLAN1 should be able to access the branch server. So the branch server is here. And remember this is HQLAN1. So let's see, no hosts should be able to access the branch server. We wanna make sure that we do this as efficiently as possible. So I think because, and this is still an extended, so we wanna be as close to the source as possible. Now you might think that you could just use the same wildcard mask that we determined before, and you could technically, but there is some shorthand that we could do here. Um, and it relates to, we could deny any, anything coming from here because it's all HQLAN1, okay? So we could do it on this interface here. So we need to determine which interface that is. Do show IP interface brief. And you could, in this case, you could refer to the um, addressing table as well. I just kind of get in the habit of doing this way. And um, this is looking like it's the G000. Okay, so let's write this up. So access list, oh, we need to go back to global configuration mode. I was um, within the interface configuration there. So access list, uh, we're using the number 111, remember? Now, remember we could, we need to deny IP. And because we're denying the entire LAN, um, we could just say any because we're going to specify on this port only. And the destination is this host, <clears throat> the branch server. This is just one host IP. So we could do the shorthand of host 192.168.2.45. And that's it for that. Okay. So that's going to deny everything from there. All other traffic should be permitted. So very similar to what we ran before. Um, access list 111. We, we, we can uh, either deny permit remark. Uh, we want to permit IP any any. Okay, and then remember we said we wanted to place this Remember, it's, a, it's an extended ACL. We're placing it as close to the source as possible. We're placing it on the G000. So interface G slash zero slash zero. IP access group. The ACL number, 111. And remember, this is where we choose either inbound or outbound. And this is whatever's coming in from the HQ1 LAN. All right, gets us the 50% and takes care of ACL2 requirements. Number three, create a named, named standard ACL. Okay, so this is a little bit different process. Um, standard, remember we're gonna be looking at uh, placing the ACL closest to the destination. We're going to use a very specific name, VT underscore, VTY underscore block. Uh, only addresses from the HQLAN2 network, so down here, should be allowed access to HQLAN1. Oh, I'm sorry. I just jumped to number four. Okay. Only addresses from the HQLAN2 network should be able to access the VTY lines of the HQ router. Okay. So closest to the destination, it's gonna be this HQ router. Um, but keep in mind, it's not similar to how we've been doing on the interfaces. We need to do this on the VTY lines. 
instead. So in the process to do a named ACL is a bit different. So remember before we were saying access list from global config mode, but here um, the command is going to start with IP. And if you ever forget, um, you could do question mark, pull up a list, but the command is also access list, but we just need to remember to put that IP in front of it. So IP access list, we determine if we do a question mark, we see our options. Next, we determine, okay, is this standard or is this extended? We are told this is to be a standard ACL. And then we give it its name, vty underscore block. And now you notice the command prompt, we are now configuring this standard network ACL. Okay. Um, so we need to permit everything from this network. So that's going to require us to determine um, the wildcard mass. So let me pull over my notepad just so everybody can get it. Get used to how I usually kind of do this in my head. So we're doing a, a dash 29. I'm only going to focus on the last fourth octet here. So we're going to have to turn on the first five. Right, so this would be 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And now this is a case where we're, we're close to the, closer to the right. So let's count by the powers of two from the right to the left. So this is one, two, and four. You add those together, you get seven. So the sub, or I'm sorry, the wildcard mask or the inverse of the subnet mask is zero, 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 seven. Okay. So that means that we need to permit 192, we're, we're uh, permitting this network down here, 168.1.64, followed by the wildcard mask, and that's that. So this one's pretty simple, just that one command. And now, remember, we need to interface with the line. Um, you can double check to see how many virtual terminals are available on a particular device. You could say uh, do show run. And if we space bar all the way down. Okay, so we see that this only has um, five virtual terminals. So we'll say line VTY 04. We're interfacing with that. Now this command is a little bit different as well. I remember before we ran IP access group to assign um, the ACLs, but here we do access dash class. And then basically it's just asking for the, for the name. So VTY block, right? We have that over here, VTY block. And then once again, is this in or out? So we're looking to block things coming in from this network. So that will be in, that gets us our points and that completes ACL three. Okay. Number four, uh, create a named extended ACL. So extended closest to the source called branch underscore two underscore HQ. No hosts on either of the branch land should be allowed access to HQ land one. Okay. So here's branch land one. Here's branch land two. They cannot access HQ land one. Now here's the important part. Use one access list statement for each of the branch lands. All other traffic should be allowed. So thinking about this as an extended ACL, a named extended, uh, we want to be as close to the source as possible. Now you could, to be as close as the source, you could put one ACL on this network, on, on this interface here, another ACL on this interface here, but that would not meet our requirements of using one access list statement. So what's the next closest? That would be this interface here. And 
we would be setting this for outbound traffic. So this way, anything coming from each of these lands, once it hits here, um, it's going to be blocking that outbound traffic. Now, this whole lab in general, and learning how ACLs work, knowing the difference between standard and extended, what's most important is knowing where to place these ACLs most efficiently, because you could do it also on HQ, and it would still block, you know, to HQ LAN 1, but is that the most efficient? And, and no, it's not because you would have unnecessary bandwidth going between the branch and the HQ router. So this is why it's always good practice to place it um, as close to the source as possible. All right, so that means we're going to be uh, using the branch router this time for the fourth ACL. Okay, let's go into global config mode. So similarly as before, we're doing a named ACL. So this begins with IP access list instead of just access list. And remember, we choose between extended or standard. Standard, this is an extended. And then we give it its name. So branch to HQ. All right. So now we are interfacing with that. So now that we're inside here, we're creating our list. Um, you may also get confused. Okay, you may think you need to do this all in one command. But that's that's not true. One now that we're accessed with, we're, we're interfacing with this access list. This is the one access list that we'll be using. We're basically going to have have two deny statements here. One for each of these. Uh, sorry, not not these. Those are the hosts. Um, these branch networks. Okay. So that means we need to figure out the wildcard masks for the slash 27, and the slash 28. So if I do, oops, I don't know why I copied that. If we do a slash 28. This means we're basically, say we, we know that this is seven uh, powers of two, one, two, four, eight. So eight plus seven is going to be 15. And then a slash uh, 27 up here. I realize I'm kind of doing these backwards, but just going down the line. This would be one, 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 zero, 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 zero. And you know what comes next after powers of two, after eight, you have 16. 15 plus 16 is. 31. Oops. Okay. All right. So let's do the slash 27 first. So we need to deny IP 192.168.2.0 wildcard mask of 31. And now we need to specify the destination, which is HQLAN1. And we already know the wildcard mask. Remember, this is the original one that we did at the beginning of the video. So we'd say 192.168.1.0. That's the HQLAN1 network here, followed by its subnet mask. Whoops, I think I have an extra space in there. There we go. Okay, that takes care of branch LAN 1. Now we need to do branch LAN 2. Move this over here so we can see the IP. Deny IP 192.168.2.32. 0, 0, 0, 0. This is the 15. And then this is going to be the same for the HQ LAN 1 information. All right, I think we're done with the wildcard masks. And finally, all other traffic should be allowed. So permit IP any any. And now finally, 
Uh, remember, it's this interface that we need to place this on. So let me do show IP interface brief. We need to find a serial. Okay, so that's serial 011 right here. So let's interface with that. And uh, remember for the named ACLs, we start with IP access group. And then the ACL name branch underscore two underscore HQ. And finally, in or out, this is anything that's going out. So the rest of the ACLs, we've been working on things that are coming in. But in this case, it's going to be what's coming out. And that gets us to 100% completion. So that takes care of all the ACL requirements. Um, I realized that I totally skipped over step one in the beginning of the video and verifying essentially what, what it's asking you to do is to ping all of, you know, ping across the network, make sure everything is, you can get through. And then afterwards you see if you can, you can make that connection and I'll, I'll let you work on this verify ACL operation on your own. I kind of wanted to keep this video somewhat short we're already at 30 minutes um but basically you just want to see how these acls have affected the communication so for example if we go to pc1 come to the command prompt um can we ping branch land one or i'm sorry the branch server can we can we ping that say ping 192.168.2.45 destination host unreachable. So if I would have done that in the beginning of the video, it would have pinged and it would have uh, made that connection just fine. But because we're, we have a block here, um, nothing from this network can get to the branch server. So yeah, I encourage you to go through these um, and do those tests just so you can get, get a, a full experience of how these ACLs you know, affect the communication and allow you to control uh, the traffic on your network. So great, that is all. Thanks for joining and I will see you in the next one.